YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy Ethan and Katie Geethers, and we're back here today with another video. So today, I'm talking all things NBA trade deadline, okay? So in this video, we're going to basically just go over all the every single transaction that happened, the waves, um, some of the waiver wire pickups, and um, some, you know, talk about some that may might still happen. There's a lot of the waiver of people that did get waived that haven't got picked up yet. That will, that, that will come to fruition in the next couple weeks. No, we're going to talk about all the trades right now. And then a video you're going to be all going to see the day after this one comes out is another video about the trade deadline. But really pinpointing the team, three major teams that didn't make any moves. And it doesn't really make sense why. Um, we're not going to talk about that video today. Today, we're just going to talk about the transactions that happened, how I really feel about them. Of course, some of them are going to be talked about more than others. Um, and then, yeah, we can just go ahead and get into that. Um, before we get into the video, make sure I like the video, subscribe if you're new, subscribe over here, the Trade Ball Podcast, and subscribe over on my Geethers channel as well. Um, we are going to upload this probably on both channels. So, um, But yeah, we drop NBA content on both channels, so y'all go ahead and go check them both out. And we usually drop a new podcast here on the Trade Ball Podcast every Monday. So... Uh, make sure y'all check that out. And without further ado, we can go ahead and get into it. So, on um, the first trade that happened, technically happened like Wednesday night ish. Um, fully, like the full transaction, fully went through around Wednesday night. Was Xavier Tillman to the to the Celtics for Lamar Stevens, the two second round picks. Um, a lot of people might think this isn't this is really a nothing trade, but I actually love this trade for the Celtics. You know, I think the Celtics had a very, very, very good deadline for all things considered. You know, they didn't have to do much; they're already the best team in basketball. Um, but we have they have another trade that we'll talk about. But they picked up Xavier Tillman. You know, this is a guy who can come in. He plays a he's a great defender for his size at center. Um, he'll rebound the ball and he he can play some defense, block some shots, set screens, and roll the rim. That's all you really need out of, out of a guy like him. You know, and he's going to be what the third center in your rotation anyway. So if a guy like Al Horford goes down with him being you know thirty seven, thirty eight years old, however old it may be, and then you having a guy like Chris Asperzingas, who's been having a crazy season, but who is, you know, had a lot of injuries in his career. This is a guy that can come in and, you know, he doesn't have to play or he can come in and be a, a big part to your team if you need him the most. So this is a guy you trust in a playoff series, I would say. You, you, you trust him. He has a playoff experience. You trust this guy coming in and being that third string center. So I like it for them a lot. They gave him Lamar Stevens, a guy who wasn't really in the rotation in two seconds. Helps make them even better. So I like that for them. Now moving on, we can go ahead and move on to all the Thursday trades. Now this Thursday, of course, will be the trade deadline. And we can go ahead and start off with nothing too crazy. They had Delano Banton traded to the Trailblazers for like a second. Nothing too crazy. Maybe he can be something good for the Celtics or for the um moving from the Celtics to the Blazers. Maybe they can turn him into something. I liked him. He was on the Raptors, rangy defender. I think he could be a solid he could be a real NBA player. So we'll see what he can do in a team that he can actually get playing time on. Then you got um Jaden Springer was another move was the main other move the Celtics made. They picked up Jaden Springer from the Sixers for a second round pick. Um this is another guy that who knows, maybe can come in, develop under some of these other star wings and be a decent defender for you. You never know. Um but he's another guy that helps bolster up that end of the bench a little bit and he didn't really give up much for him. So I like it for them. Um, moving on, we move on to one of the bigger trades of the deadline. Um, two winners of the deadline, in my opinion, um, Charlotte and OKC. Um, of course, Charlotte sending Trey Mann um, and Davis Bertans and a second for Gordon Hayward. Um, now, this is a Gordon Hayward is a guy that is averaging about 15, 5 and 5 this season. Pretty chill, really good role player stat line. Um, and then you got Trey Mann going over to Charlotte, who is a guy that is a real NBA player. You know, he doesn't get a lot of playing time, but he, this is a guy who is very, very good at creating his own shot. and can be a guy who will defend a little bit. You know, he's not the best defender, but he has the tools to be a, be a good defender. Um, now, going to Charlotte, I don't know if that's the best way for you to develop, but he's going to get playing time there. And he can be a guy who plays next to LaMelo. And um, Davis Bertans obviously was in there for the make the money match, and you get a second out of it. Um, not maybe what you could have gotten in recent years for Gordon Hayward, but it's still a lot better than than just letting them walk for nothing. And you got a nice young player out of it. You got a second, it might have been two, something somewhere along those lines. Um, but I like it a lot. And for the Thunder side, you know, this is a high, this is a 
low risk, high reward move. You know, this is, I mean, this, that's the best type of move in, in, in when it comes to basketball or any sport, honestly. Low risk and high reward. Come on. I mean, so you, you're buying a guy who's like averaging about, like I said, 15, 5 and 5 on the season. You know, it might be a little bit less, a little bit more, but it's around that, right? And this is a guy who, kind of a jack of all trades. He'll defend, he'll, he can create his own shot, he'll play make a little bit, he can spot up, be a catcher, and that's where he's going to thrive, I feel like, being, trying, being a decent defender, getting a shot when they need him to, he can get downhill, he can shoot a catch and shoot three, he can do it all. And he's a veteran at the end of the day. It's going to help this locker room, who this OKC team, who's trying to compete. You know, they're, they're, they're trying, their team is trying to compete. Their team is a top three seed, obviously. So this is a team that, even though we don't, people might not necessarily be looking at them as title contenders, it's a team that is pushing for a championship now. You know, they're young or whatever, but, and they still have all these picks, but they're pushing for a championship now. And if you couldn't bring in, you know, I was a guy that wanted to go get Larry Markinen, but if you, you couldn't do that, obviously. Um, I get it seemed like he wasn't even on the market anyway, but you got a guy who, he he can come in and, and he makes your team better. And you gave up players. Davis Bertans obviously wasn't in the rotation. He just makes the money match. And then Trey Mann, Trey Mann wasn't even really in the rotation because they just have so many guards already that they can't. They, he he just doesn't deserve playing time over at the end of the day. You know, Case and Wallace off the bench. Of course, you have Shea, Josh Giddy, Lou Dort, all these guys that are better than him and are going to get more PT than him. And um, it's a shame, but. It is what it is, you know. That's what when you have that many, so much young talent, some of it's going to have to be shipped out for slightly better or older players because not all of them want to get that opportunity and chance to shine, you know. And I love it because they get you get you shipped out two players that don't play. You got a player that's probably going to be inserted to your starter lineup, and if he isn't, say he does get injured. That's the one thing with Gordon Hayward. Well, what about if he's injured? It doesn't matter, in my opinion. If he it does end up being injured and can't play. In the playoffs, or gets, is out for a significant amount of time, your team's still the same. That's have you at the at his top three seed all season anyway, you know, because you didn't give up thing anything of significance to you. The Thunder, you know, obviously Trey Man's a good player, but to the Thunder, he wasn't playing for them. He wasn't doing anything crazy for them, so you didn't, didn't give up anything of significance. So if Gordon Hayward isn't there, you're still fine. If he is there, you're even better. So, like I said, low risk, high reward. I love it for them. <laughs> Moving on, we had a couple small trades. You have um, Sacramento trading for Robin Lopez from Milwaukee, just like for cash considerations or something. Um, he eventually got waived. We'll talk about all the all the waiver wires at the end, but um, kind of a nothing trade. Just wanted to mention it. Um, moving on, we got Shake Milton. That's actually a decent trade in my opinion. Shake Milton, Troy Brown Jr. in a second going over to um, Detroit for Monte Morris. Detroit also had a decent deadline. Um, they both they got a decent amount of seconds, second round picks. I think they could have done more because there's a couple things I questioned. Um, but they got a lot more second round picks um, this deadline. And you trade Martin Morris, who you know obviously isn't helping you be better at all. Detroit, I mean, they're, they're going to be the 15th seed. But the Timberwolves, they got their backup point guard. They've been looking for a backup point guard, especially when you have Mike Conley going being in and out of the line of injury and stuff like that. Monty Morris is another steady backup point guard. He's one of the best backup point guards you can have in the league. At least that's what he was with Denver. You know, hasn't been as good since he's not been with them. But he's a guy that's going to get you assists. And he's going to be able to run your offense, and he's not going to turn the ball over. And that's all you can really ask for for a team like Minnesota. Because they have that guy in their starting lineup already, and Mike Conley. So you have, you know, a lesser version of Mike Conley off the bench. So it works out for them. Haven't seen much from him this season, Monty Morris. But... He's been injured. And he's been on the Pistons, so I expect we I expect to see more once he's in fully in, gotten used to playing under that Timberwolves system. Um, and in Detroit, you know, you got off a guy that you, you traded a guy that had decent value. You got a couple second, you got a second, you got some other decent role players that you that they might be waving slash. I'm um, just keeping around. It doesn't really matter. And for a guy that wasn't going to be important to you, so props to them. Moving on, we have another. Kind of semi-important trade. Um, I like it a lot for the Bucks, and that's the Bucks getting Patrick Beverly for a Cameron Payne in a second. Um, it works out. You know, Cameron Payne also had a decent first game with the Sixers, um, and he's a guy that can be a, a, a really good backup PG in this league. So he just wasn't really fitting in with the Bucks. So we'll see what he knew with the Sixers, and they got a second out of Patrick Beverly. And Patrick Beverly is exactly what Milwaukee needs, honestly. He's a guy that is going to be a vocal leader. 
And I feel like they need that in that locker room, especially with, you know, new coach and coming in and out, all, all the drama that's surrounded them this season. It's going to help having that vocal leader and a guy who's also, no matter what the stats say, a really good defender. Um, he's made all defensive teams in the past, and they need another guard defender in there because, you know, when you, your main guard is Damian Lillard, it helps to have the guy off the bench being a guy like Patrick Beverly. That helps a lot. So I like it for them. He, you know, Pat Bev and um, Cameron Payne each had decent first games um, when they in their first games with their new team. So I like it a lot. Um, moving on, we had a three teamer. Um, this three teamer was actually not a big one, but just a lot of shuffling of the decks, if you will. Um, it was between Memphis, Brooklyn, and Phoenix. So you have Memphis getting Yuta Watanabe and Shemezi Metu, who eventually got waived, I believe. And second, um, I don't remember how many seconds, like a second or two. Um, you got Brooklyn getting Jordan Goodwin, who eventually got waived, Kata Bates Diot, and a second from Phoenix. And you have the Suns, who gave up each second in this trade to each team. You got them getting David Roddy and Royce O'Neal. So, pretty much a shuffling of the decks. Royce O'Neal has been a decent role player the past couple of years. I obviously played with KD a little bit last year. Um, this can be a guy that can be decent for the Suns. You know, they've been all they had all those minimum guys that came in and not all of them panned out. Like obviously Yuta Watanabe hasn't really panned out for them. He had a really good season last year, but not as much this year. You got um Shemezi Metz who wasn't really doing much for them. Uh Kata Bates Diop wasn't the best for them. Didn't have a season like he was having a year before. So just shuffling of the deck, getting Royce O'Neal, who's probably the best best player out of all this. That's why they had to give up the second round picks. Um, and then David Roddy, of course, just, just shuffling the decks with the role players, getting a, a higher quality 3 and D guy. Works out for Phoenix, and then it works out for the other two teams because they got a little bit of draft compensation. And, you know, these aren't teams that are competing this year anyway. So works out. Um, obviously, in Brooklyn, they had traded a first-round pick to get Royce O'Neal um, before they had, you know, traded KD and all that, which sucks. You gave a first-round pick, and now you're not getting as much back for him. But he was never really worth a first-round pick anyway, so... Um, at least you got something back for him. But I like it for Phoenix. Rich O'Neal is still a really good NBA player. Um, and that's just the thing with role players. You know, like, you know, Watanabe for Brooklyn last season was playing great defense and shooting 40-plus percent from three. Obviously not the same case this season. That's just that's just how it is with role players, especially when they're switching teams as much as they are. They're not going to always pan out. So um, they're able to switch it up, and hopefully Rich O'Neal can fit in with the Suns. But moving on, we had... Um, actually a pretty big trade and Daniel Gaff, it's surrounding Daniel Gaff, of course, when he went to the Mavs, um, he actually had a very, very good first game. He had like 19 points and seven for 11 from the field. Um, the other night, um, very, very good, very, very good trade. And it's a bit questionable. I'm sorry. I, I want to say I'll call it a very, very good trade, but he was, I think it's going to be a very, very good fit. So which might make it a very good trade, but it was Daniel Gafford for Rashawn Holmes and a first round pick. Not a lot of first round picks were moved this this deadline, but this was one of them. The Mavs moved two of the three first round picks that were traded. And um they moved the first round pick. It's not gonna be a high first round pick, obviously. First round pick and Rashawn Holmes got off the Rashawn Holmes contract for Daniel Gafford from the Wizards. And I like this trade a lot. Um I don't like giving up a first round pick for Daniel Gafford, but at the end of the day, it's not gonna be a high first round pick. And it makes your team better at the end of the day. And that's what you can ask for. You can ask for more talent around Luka. And this is a guy who is the, it's the type of center that the Mavs want. And they already have their center in Derek Lively. But this is Derek Lively off the bench, essentially. You know, you have to set your second name, Derek Lively, now. Because Daniel Gafford is a very, very good quality center. He's going to get in there. He's going to get the re, re, get rebounds, block shots, play paint defense. He'll be able to guard a pick and roll decent. And he'll be able to run the pick and roll with Luca and Kyrie, catch lobs, dunk the ball. That's all you can really ask for. You know, you got guys, you still have guys like Maxi Kleber and and um, I'm not cutting this out. Dwight Powell. I, I was about to look up his name. I I can never remember Dwight Powell's name. But you still got guys like I'm not cutting that out either. You still got guys like Maxi Kleber and Dwight Powell, who. Off the bench, they can be decent, but they're not the they're not the they're not the backup base that you want. Just because like Maxi Kleber is neither of them are protecting the paint that well or rebounding that outstanding. And Maxi Kleber, he can help stretch the floor, but um the, the just the defense with them at big you don't like. But you you like Derek Lively as your center, obviously. You like Dwight Powell, or I'm sorry, you like Daniel Gafford 
coming in there now. And you gave up a guy that wasn't important to you, and you did give up a first, but it's Daniel Gafford's a starting quality center. He's a starting caliber center. Now, do you want him starting on a championship team? No. But Dallas is trying to be a championship team. They have him coming off the bench. Coming off the bench on a championship team, very, very quality. And I, I look forward to seeing that. Obviously, his first game, he played very, very well. So um, they have another trade that we'll talk about. But that was a very decent trade for them. I don't mind it. Hopefully, it pans out so that first we don't look back and say, wow, they gave a first round pick for a guy who's not going to even, who they just traded again, you know? But I, I like it for them. I think he's going to be a very, very good backup center for them. But moving on, we had a kind of three team trade, not really a three team trade, but I'm going to call it a three team trade to make it easier to explain. All right. So. It was the Sixers getting Buddy healed. Um, I like this for them a lot. He he is a guy that I think will probably walk this off season, but he's a guy they didn't give up anything of importance to them, and he got he's a guy that's going to be very good next to Joel if Joel does come back this season and help them in their playoff push. So I like it a lot, even if Buddy healed walks, but hopefully he doesn't walk, and for their sake. But even if he does, they didn't give up anything of significance. So hopefully they can fix him to, to re-sign with with Philly and play next to Joel Embiid. Could be huge for them. But they pretty much they gave up Marcus Morris, Furkan Korkmaz, and um like a second or two, I want to say. And this was traded to Indiana, of course. But then Marcus Morris got traded to San Antonio for Doug McDermott in a second. So it was weird. But pretty much all in all, out of these three teams, you got Furkan Korkmaz, Doug McDermott, a second in Indiana, and you got a second in Marcus Morris. In San Antonio, and of course, you got Buddy Hill and the Sixers. And Marcus Morris and Frickin' Korkmaz both got waived. So, um, all in all, I like it. You know, Buddy Hill was a guy who was expiring and wanted to be traded, so you weren't going to get much out of him at the end of the day if you're Indiana. But you still got a guy like Doug McDermott who can come in and be a, a decent player next to in, in that Indiana offense. Um, still provide you something. You're not, not Buddy Hill level shooting, but you got shooting nonetheless. And, you know, Buddy Hill. He's one, he's one of the best shooters of all time. So, obviously, you're not getting that. And that's why I like this trade so much for the 76ers because you got one of the greatest shooters of all time, statistically and just visual and just eye test wise, on your team. So, I love it for them. And, you know, Indiana, they have another guy that can come in and be decent for them. Not Buddy Heal level production, but you were going to lose him either way. You got off of him now. Why you can still get something? You got a second round pick out of it, too. Can't complain if you're them. You know, obviously, that's not the value of Buddy Heal, but. It's either that or you lose them for nothing in the offseason. So they did the smart thing. And then San Antonio just got off Doug McDermott, waved Marcus Morris, and got a second-round pick out of it. Can't complain if I'm then. Um, moving on, we have the other big Mavericks trade. So we have P.J. Washington going over in a, a second-round pick, going over to Dallas for Grant Williams, Seth Curry, and a first-round pick. This is the main other first. This is the big first one. Unprotected at 2027 or something like that, I want to say. First round pick got traded to the Charlotte Hornets. And I love this trade from the Charlotte Hornets for that matter because PJ Washington is a very, very good NBA player. Um, but at the end of the day, he's not, he doesn't really fit your timeline, if that makes sense. He's not an old player by any means, but I just like it better for them getting, getting that good value first round pick out of it. And Grant Williams, who I still believe, even though he, he didn't fit with Dallas, I, I really, I maybe it didn't fit is a weird word. I really feel like at the beginning of the season, he, at the beginning of the season, he was a good fit, and I still thought he was a good fit. But it was just like outside of basketball stuff going on, like him, he was rubbing people the wrong way in the locker room. There's locker room issues, and he still had a, you know, even though it wasn't a big contract, it was multi year contract. So you never want that for a role player that big and long of a contract on your books. So. Um, it worked out. They got off of the Green Williams contract, and that l the relationship between them and the, him and the Mavs didn't work out. I saw a report. I think it was fake. I hope it was fake. But it said Grant Williams apparently was cha changed his shoes from Lucas to Tatum's, <laughs> um, and that rubbed people the wrong way. There was other stuff going on in the locker room, but it is what it is. That, that type of stuff happens, and hopefully Grant Williams doesn't rot away in Charlotte. Um, but he can maybe be valued for them. And if not, like, I don't think he will be. I think his value is actually going to go down being on that team. And hopefully, I hope he can get traded somewhere for to an actual contender next this offseason because his value is not going to really be shown in Charlotte, I don't think. But I could eat my words and maybe Charlotte is, becomes better soon and he fits in like a level with them. So we'll see. Um, 
But and if Seth Curry, of course, will make the money work. It's unfortunate because I thought I thought Seth Curry would be good being back in Dallas, but he's never even really cracked the rotation. So it's unfortunate for him. But PJ Washington over in Dallas. Um, I like it. his first game was decent, nothing too crazy. But he can be a guy who catch and shoots. He's a very good shooter, catch and shoot threes, pick and roll with Luca and Kyrie, pick and pop. He's going to be a versatile guy for them in their offense that makes their offense even better. Um, you lose some of the defensive side, of course, losing Grant Williams, but PJ Washington is a guy who can be a decent defender too. Um, maybe being on a contending team not even Chuck puts more effort in defense. So I like it. You know, you don't want to ever give up that late of a first round pick for a guy like PJ Washington who's going to be a role player at the end of the day. But I think it makes them better, and you have better talent around Luke after this deadline. So you got what you wanted. I, if that's what if you know if you, you're not thinking you're gonna get any more stars, which you're probably not because it's Dallas anyway. I don't mind giving up this first. So I like it, um, and I think the Dallas are really Dallas are really going to try to make a, a conference finals push now. Um, they're still a lower seed, but they're going to be a scary team with with the depth they have now because they have some real depth now. You know, you got Luke and Kyrie, you got PJ Washington, you still have Derek Lively, Tim Hardaway Jr. Um, of course, we talked about Daniel Gafford and PJ Washington. I mean, you got you got guys now. You have you have a team, and they haven't been healthy this season either. They, once they do get healthy, we could see them make a little run, and I'm here for it. Um, but moving on, kind of a nothing trade. You have Corey Joseph and a second round and like a second round pick for like another second round pick from Golden State. It was weird, just a, kind of a nothing trade. Uh, like opened up a roster spot for the Warriors. So I thought I'm, I was thinking they were going to make some other deals, but they didn't. Um, but they could sign some guys out of the through the waiver wires. We'll see. Um, and Corey Joseph ended up just getting waived after that. So pretty much a nothing trade. Um, Corey Joseph could be a guy we see get picked up. Um and then the biggest, I'd say the biggest trade of the deadline probably, um and the absolute winners for the deadline the New York Knicks. So you have the New York getting Bojan Bogdanovic and Alec Burks, Bojan and Alec Burks from Detroit for Malachi Flynn. I just Malachi Flynn who I just gotten there only been there for a little while. Excuse me, from Toronto and the OG deal. You trade Quentin, Gore, Quentin Grimes, the main piece of this, and then Ryan Archidiakono and Evan Fournier for the money. Um, and then two second round picks. I love this trade for both teams, honestly, because, um, you know, New York just got even deeper. They were already a deep team, got even deeper. Um, and Bojan Badovic and Alec Burks, both somewhat starter caliber players, probably both come off the bench. Maybe Bojan starts. Um, we'll see how Tom. The Mido decides to do stuff, you know, once they're fully healthy with, you know, Julius Randle and OG Nanobi back, who are both out with injury right now. But this team, is, this team is deep, man. New York is very deep, and they're arguably the second best team in the East behind the Celtics, of course. So I love it for them. And they didn't give up any first round picks. They still have all their first round picks. They have a lot of, they have a lot of picks to work with. So I love it. I love it. And they got off, you know, you got rid of Malachi Flynn, kind of just to throw in. Um, Evan Fournier for the money. Ryan Archidinak, you know. And their main piece, right, it was Quentin Grimes, of course. Quentin Grimes, I like it for Detroit because he can be a really good 3 and D guy for them, I feel like. And he deserves opportunity. He just didn't, he was playing behind so many guards in New York, you know, similar with the Trey Mann situation, you know. You got, you know, I think Quentin Grimes is a better NBA player than Trey Mann. You still hear guys like, you're not getting playing time above Jalen Brunson, above Dante DiVincenzo, who's having a crazy good season, above, um, and a good stretch recently, the past 10 games or so, above guys like Josh Hart. You know, it's just not you're not going to get playing time over those guys, unfortunately. And we already know Tom Tom Thibodeau. Even if he does have deep teams, he likes to have his starters playing forty something minutes a game anyway. So, um, it's just he, he sometimes will play, sometimes wouldn't. It's unfortunate, but at the end of the day, it's that's how it was, you know. And you, he, it's it's going to be good for him to be somewhere where he can thrive. So I like it for him, and I think he could be a good three and D guy next to guys like Cade and Jaden Ivey. And then um, on the piss inside of it, like I said, he can be a decent guy for them. The other three, not a big deal. Maybe Malachi Flynn can be something for them. But, you know, they got two second round, second round picks out of it. You didn't get, of course, first round picks, um, which is unfortunate considering, you know, Bojan Bogdanovic has more been warranting two, like two first round picks in a trade for him just a year ago. Um, but the power of hindsight's you know, crazy. It's a it's a superpower at the end of the day. And you know, we can look back at now and say that, but at the end of the day they didn't jump on it and um it it they they're paying for it. But 
all in all, you still got something out of him, and you still got decent stuff out of him. You know, Quentin Grimes is pretty much like a first round pick in value wise, so you still got something that's decent out of Alec Burks and Bojan Bogdanovic. If, if it was me, I would have traded him when people were, when teams were offering two first round picks, but. Haters can't be beg- beggars can't be choosers. Um, it is what it is, and you still made out good in the situation. So, W for Detroit and New York. Um, New York definitely won the deadline. Um, next trade, not a not a big trade. Um, we had Thaddeus Sung and Dennis Schroeder traded to the Nets for Spencer Dinwiddie. Spencer Dinwiddie, of course, being bought out, and Thaddeus Sung being bought out. Um, he's definitely a guy we'll be seeing hopefully get picked up soon. And Spencer Day, we already got picked up. We'll talk about that eventually. Um, but yeah, Dennis Schroeder, man, he's going to be um, probably the starting PG over there in, in um, Brooklyn. Um, I like it for them. Um, he was going to supposed to be the starting PG for Toronto, but of course they got Emmanuel quickly coming in, so it makes more sense for him to be elsewhere because Dennis Schroeder is a starting is starting caliber PG in this league, I believe. Um, so not much, not, not big deal of a trade, but, you know, Toronto get enough of, um, the fatty Sion contract and getting off of, um, pretty much open a rush spot for them, but we can go ahead and move on. Nothing too big going on right there. Next you have Philadelphia and Detroit, pretty much of a nothing trade, pretty much Daniel house going to Philly and then getting waived, or I'm sorry, Daniel house going to Detroit and then getting waived, um, second round picks in that deal. Not, not nothing much to see there. Um, moving on, we had the weirdest trade that I feel like. Um, you have Kyra Lewis Jr. and Otto Porter going to Utah, a lot as, as well as a first round pick for Kelly Olynyk and Oshai Bud. Now, very very odd trade in my opinion, just because you know this was the like I said there was three first round picks moved this whole deadline, and this was one of them. They forced the maps to the other two. And then this one being, you know, a first round pick for Kelly Olynyk, kind of, I feel like is is very odd because, um, for you know, Kyra Lewis, he hasn't seen much of him in his NBA career. Otto Porter, he's a vet on the on the decline. Um, and you got the best player out of it in Kelly Olynyk, and you got a young player in Oshai Body. He was just a first round pick a year and a half ago, but we haven't seen much of him, and he couldn't get playing time over on the on the Jazz. And the Jazz are a good team. I'm not saying they're not, but he couldn't get playing time on the Jazz. It's not like he was on the Celtics, you know? So it, I question it. Um, but maybe the Raptors see something in him and think he can be something. And Kelly Olenek, obviously, is the best player in this deal. But I don't think he's first-round pick worthy, not if Bojan Bogdanovic isn't, you know? So I really know it's just a question of the direction of the Raptors. Um, it's like they try to compete, but they're not good enough to compete. Um, they don't want to go full on rebuild mode. But for them, I just think it's crazy giving a first-round pick, even though it's going to be a late, a, a late first-round pick, obviously. but this is a team that knows how to draft. You know, they, they OG and Anobi, Norman Powell, um, Pascal Siakam, just to name a few of the recent ones, are all late first round picks. So they know how to draft. They've always drafted well. So um, I question for them. I, I, I like it for the Jazz, of course, because obviously they didn't see anything in Oshai Baji, and um, they got off Kelly Olynyk and got a first round pick out of it. So, you know, Danny Age doing Danny Age things. And, um, you know, maybe hopefully the Raptors see something in Oshai and they can turn him into something. But if not, they should, we're going to be looking back at this trade thinking, why they give up their first round pick who turned into so and so player, you know? Um, moving on, we have a, I would say a bit of an other trade, but not real. We have, um, Fontecchio from Utah being traded to Detroit for like a second and Kevin Knox, who eventually got waived. Um, Fonte- Fontecchio, I really like. Um, he's a guy that, for, I, that's why I said Detroit had a, had a, had a, had a um, a low key decent deadline because Pacheco is a guy. He'll, he'll come in and he in his first couple of games for for Detroit, he's already shooting. He, he'll come in, he'll shoot that, he'll shoot those threes, and that's something Detroit needed. And you know their best shooter at that before all these trades happened was Kevin Knox, and um he's not a shooter. You know as much as he, he's a guy who will shoot him and he, he can make him, but Kevin Knox isn't a shooter. But Fontecchio is a decent shooter, so I like it for them. Um, Utah's got a second out of him. And it works out for Detroit and Utah because they obviously didn't want to resign in the offseason because he'll be a restricted free agent. So I like it for both teams. Um, but that finishes out the trades. Um, we're almost at the thirty minute mark, so I'm gonna work through these waiver these this uh the waves real real quick. Um, let y'all know about all the players that got waived. Um, and then, like I said, we're not gonna talk about the. I have three specific teams I want to talk about. But I'm not going to talk. I'm going to talk about them in a second video. The teams that didn't make trades. So we just want. I just really want to go over every transaction that happened today. But I'll go over some of the people that got waived and 
why it happened. You know, we already talked about Robin Lopez, not a big deal. Corey Joseph, not a big deal. Detroit waved Neil Gallinari. Maybe he gets picked up, but it's just unfortunate. This guy, you know, very decent NBA player, but he just had some some gnarly injuries the past couple of years, so nothing you can really do. Um, Charlotte, they waived Frank Nilakina. Um, and Ish Smith, not really any surprises there. I think Ish Smith could be a, definitely a guy that gets picked up. Um, and then they also waived James Booknight, um, former lottery pick for them. Um, sad to see, just lottery pick a couple of years ago. He's had he's had um, off the court troubles, like out of outside of the NBA troubles, you know, with the law and stuff. So, and when he was playing, it's a guy that I mean, he couldn't do nothing. You know, he is a guy who doesn't pass the ball at all. He's one of those Jordan Poole type players, which I'm not to be disrespectful Jordan Poole, but he he only shoots the ball. He's in there just shooting the ball. He's not passing it and. He wasn't efficient either. He only had a couple twenty point games in his career, you know. And um, he he might get picked up by some team because I mean, even in the G League, he wasn't doing anything. So maybe he just needs a change of scenery because we know how they are over there in Charlotte. But um, I wish nothing but the best for him. But sad to see another one of their lottery picks go. And we'll talk about another lottery pick that got waived in a minute. But um, Thaddeus Young, we talked about. He's a guy that I would, I expect the team to pick up. Um, Spencer Dinwiddie already got picked up. He got waived by the Toronto Raptors, and he signed to the Lakers. But I was talking about that team in, in, in a different video. So he did get picked up by the Lakers. Um, Memphis Grizzlies officially waived Victor Oladipo. Sad to see, man. I, I think Victor Oladipo is probably out of the league now. Um, sad to see, but just his injuries just just keep piling on and don't stop. So unfortunately, I think what's best for Victor now is really just getting healthy. And he's made his NBA money, you know. So hopefully he can. Have a, have a healthier life for for now on because those leg injuries are rough, man. Um, we talked about Daniel House getting waived. He's a guy that I think might possibly get picked up. And then Detroit also waived these two guys. Um, I was surprised about Killian Hayes and Joe Harris. Killian Hayes, of course, being the bigger surprise because I thought I figured he was going to get moved because obviously they requested a trade or whatever. Um, him and his camp, but former number seven overall pick from a couple years back waived. Um, he'll get picked up, I'm sure, by a team like the Spurs or something. That could, I mean, I think the Spurs could use him. Is end of the day, as much as on the trade ball podcast we joke about Killian Hayes, he's still a guy that is a really NBA player. I think you know, scoring wise, it's terrible. You know, it's it's it's, it's bad. Uh, he doesn't even look at the rim. So he's got that Ben Simmons energy sometimes, but he'll play make and he'll defend. Um, and like a team like the Spurs could definitely use that. So. Um, I think it's crazy that they couldn't get just one second round pick out of him at least, but it is what it is. Maybe he needs this change of scenery and he can get better because this is a guy coming to the draft that a lot of people thought was going to be good. So um, it's unfortunate, but and then Joe Harris, you know, I feel like that's another guy that you couldn't get a second round pick out of. You know, I mean, he's a guy who's a, a you know an elite shooter. So um, you know, obviously he's had injuries and stuff isn't as good as he was in Brooklyn a couple years back, but. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy for real, but we can go ahead and move on. Um, Brooklyn Nets waved Harry Giles. He was this guy that was on not, not any, not any big contracts or anything. So not really much going on there. Um, but let's see here. We have a couple more. We have to knock out. Um, a couple of people getting signed the rest of the season's contract, attending contract. We won't go into that. Um, James Johnson signed for the rest of the season. Good for him. You know, Pages might need him when they play against the Bucks again, just for fighting. Um, a couple of 10 day contracts. We'll skip over those. Um, the other waivers. Um, RJ Hampton got waived from Miami. Kevin Knox got waived. We talked about that. Chimenzi Metsu got waived. Furkan Korkmaz got waived from Indiana. He could maybe be a guy that gets picked up. We'll see. Um, Jordan Brooklyn waived Jordan Goodwin. Um, and that's most of the waves, really. Um, like I said, I think like Thaddeus Young is one of the biggest names right now. Spencer Dinwiddie already got picked up, and Kyle Lowry already got picked up and signed with the Sixers, um, which is a pretty decent one. Actually, we can go ahead and talk about that. Um, I like it. I like Kyle Lowry signing with the Sixers. Hopefully, the change of scenery, him being back home, could help him, and he can be a decent backup point guard for them. But obviously, he is in, is in the telling of his career. So, but I like it. Hopefully, he can get back to at least what he was a little bit last year. Um, but yeah, then we have a couple two way contracts. Nothing, nothing much, nothing that important. Um, well, Memphis, Memphis signed Gigi Jackson to a rest of season contract. That that's pretty big for them. He's been very good for them this season. Um, and then we have a couple of the waves. Um, Ryan Archidiakono got waived. He probably I don't see him getting really picked up. Maybe, but um, oh, there's one big one I forgot to mention, and 
not that big one, but I think it's another reason why OKC is a winner. They picked up a big. They got they got busy. Bismarck Biombo. Um, obviously, this is a guy who's not going to hit, not going to shoot the ball. He's not going to hit free throws, but he can. He'll set screens. He'll dunk, and he'll play defense. And um, he's a guy that you trust somewhat. You know, he he's a guy that you trust in 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 maybe in a playoff situation. You know, coming in and eating up some minutes if you're guard, if you're going against a team like you like a like like um the good center like the Nuggets. You know, and um, I like it for them. And you know, it's just another veteran guy that you can bring in and he can help you out or maybe not get playing some, but maybe come in and eat some of those, soak up some center minutes. So I like it for the Raptors. I'm sorry for the Thunder. Other than that, um, we have a couple 10-day contracts, but nothing that important. That's That about does it. So I appreciate y'all for watching, man. It's a bit of a longer video, but um, trade deadline 2024. Um, it was it was a good, I think it was a decent one. You know, it wasn't obviously as good as most trade items we're going to have because no stars or move or anything like that. But we also got to remember James Harden was traded early in the season. OG and Anobi, Pascal Siakam was already traded. So there wasn't much movement that was going to happen. You know, we may be thinking DeJounte Murray and things like that, but it is what it is. Um, these are also teams, oh, the star line we were talking about getting moved, like the DeJounte Murray, he's on a multi year contract. He can easily just get moved in the offseason. Um, team didn't need a rush. But there is a couple teams that should have done some stuff, but mainly one team in particular, the Chicago Bulls, I'm going to talk about in another video, that they should have made some moves, but they didn't. And because they didn't, that's why it's not as good of a trade deadline because, you know, the Bulls had so many people that should have been moved. But I appreciate y'all for watching, man. Hopefully I I am enlightened y'all on some of this trade deadline stuff and went over all things trade deadline. And yeah. We're looking forward to the, you know, y'all subscribe over here. We're, I'm, we're looking forward to the NBA final, not, not the finals, the NBA playoffs soon. Um, only a couple months away. You know, we're about to be that all star, a couple of days away from all star. And it's time, we're really, you know, it feels like we're far from playoffs, but we're not. So um, these teams are pretty much set now, besides a couple of different guys maybe getting picked up. And I look forward to seeing it. So I appreciate y'all for watching, man. Be sure I like, subscribe to both my Geethers channel and, and the Trayball podcast. And we're out. Peace.